Welcome to the setup manual for the HiPod Superlight. The Superlight is packed into two separate travel bags, one for the tower and the other for the electronics. We've designed this to fit into the trunk of an economy car. You can see there are two shoulder straps on the tower bag to help carry it around and the same on the camera bag with a handle. Notice inside the camera bag there are lots of little pockets and that's where you'll find all of your electronics. Camera, LCD, cables, rain gear, batteries, remote, all of it is in that bag. Make sure to look through it thoroughly. In the front pocket, you'll find some adapters and wall plugs. Some of these will be used in setup and others won't. Open the large bag and you'll find the tower. Notice on either side of the tower, there are zip pockets where you'll find more materials. We store the head of the tower and also the sandbags in here. You can see there are straps to better secure it. And you'll always wanna put the tower back into the bag feet first, then push the top into the bag. That's how it will fit more easily. Now take the tower out of the case and place it on the ground. Every tube stage has a cam lock and also a strap of Velcro to keep the cords out of the way. That's how you elevate and secure the tubes at each stage. This collar determines whether the tubes can spin 360 or are frozen in place. Note the ratchet on the side. And here you'll see the arm for the remote control attachment. Down in the base, you'll find two black metal knobs. These secure the legs in place once set into position so they can't move. There's two on the unit, here are their positions. We include three weight bags with the unit that you will need to fill with something. You must use these. It's not an option. The tower is not designed to be used without extra weight. You need to get around 30 to 35 pounds of weight in those bags. Use rocks, gravel, or actual weights themselves from the gym. Don't fill it with sand as that can be a mess, but you've got to fill them with something and apply them every time. There are two handles available for the Superlight. The first is called Basic. It is the single rope version of the handle mechanism that is included in the default pricing. This is what it looks like. It will arrive pre-attached to the tower so you don't have to find it in the bag. If you selected the upgrade option at checkout, you'll have the advanced handle. This handle has two ropes which allow for much more finesse control of the camera motions. And you'll see the two cables that will pull in and out of the handle like this. Be aware we'll switch back and forth during setup. This is the super light head mechanism. On the bottom, you'll find a threaded pin that connects to the tubes. When fully set up, you'll need the plate jutting out from the left side and the wheel will be on the right side. You'll either have one or two ropes attached depending on which handle you purchase. Once you've done a single turn to get the connection started, it's a lot easier to unlock the collar on the tube assembly that's just below this head and twist the tube to secure it and the head together. You'll need to manage your ropes while doing this, but this is a lot faster than turning the head around and around and around. When you're done, it'll look like this. As mentioned, the basic handle comes pre-attached to the unit. Notice there is a black knob on the right hand side of that handle that if you've got it unlocked, you can turn the handle up down, but if it's locked, it will hold a position. That's good for locking off a shot. The advanced handle is not pre-connected. You'll find a clamping mechanism that will hold it onto the tubes. And note the long silver rod, that's for your LCD, and that needs to be mounted to this bracket before you mount it to the tubes. Otherwise, it won't fit later, so just be aware of that. You'll have the handle on the right-hand side of the tower during connection, and the LCD bracket silver rod will end up on the left side of the tower when you're finished. Just be aware this is how you have to set it up, otherwise the connections won't work afterwards. Now on the basic handle, when pulling out the rope, if you want a bit more surface area for the rope, you can bring it back towards you one time around the handle and loop it underneath so that it comes out of the opposite side going away from you and then up towards the top. That gives you some more surface area if you want it, but you don't have to do this. Now, note the brass screw that is on this handle. It's also on the advanced handle. If you open the brass screw, you can pull the cord out but then if you lock that screw, you cannot pull the ropes out. That is gonna be important for different stages in setup. Elevating the tubes, you want that screw open. When the tubes are as high as you want them, you want to lock it down. Now, on the advanced handle, the setup is a little different. Remember, this one has two ropes. The ropes must come out of the bottom of this handle because they need the surface area to go around the round shape of the handle to create the motion necessary to control the head. Now, one rope comes out in one direction and the other rope will go in the opposite direction. 
Doesn't really matter which way they go, but they must go in opposite directions from the bottom of the handle. If you pull those ropes out directly from the top, you won't get any control over the head because there's no round shape for the ropes to follow. So just be aware of this. Now that the ropes are connected, this same black knob on the advanced handle controls locked or unlocked function of that handle. Now you can turn the head up top. This is the advanced handle and the advanced head with two ropes. And here's the basic handle and the basic head with one rope. You can see a bit of a difference in the motion between them. Now, this is something that applies to the basic handle only. As mentioned, it comes pre-attached to the tower, but by loosening the black knob to the right, you can slide it off. If taken off completely, you'll find the mount beneath. Now, I wouldn't recommend this if you were gonna travel because that mount could actually poke a hole in the bag. So leave the handle on, but you do not want to lose this knob. So just be aware that it can come off and let enough of the threading always be attached to the mount so it doesn't fall off and get lost. For the basic handle, at this step, you'll want to find the LCD rod in the bag on a side pocket and attach it to the core bracket pre-attached. This is different than the advanced handle, which will need to be connected before the handle goes onto the unit. Just find the rod and screw it into the open hole on the side like this. There is a little adapter that goes onto the bottom of your LCD. It only goes onto the LCD rod this far. There's a little notch that you'll see carved out. Don't bother pushing it any farther because it does not go any farther. Now at this stage for both towers, the physical metal aspects of the tower are complete. Now we're transitioning to electronics, which is the same for both towers. Here is the seven inch version of the LCD, which is the default screen option when purchasing a tower. If you upgraded to the 10 inch version of the screen, you're gonna need to find that little adapter mentioned in the previous section and attach it to the screen as there's not enough room to pack it. Once you have the adapter in place, just tighten the knob and it'll hold the screen as you like it. On either handle, you will find an arm that is jutting out from the back of the handle and the cords. This is what it looks like. This is where the remote control is gonna mount. Here's your remote. On the back, you're gonna find a slot that's open and you just slide the slot of the remote onto the arm coming from the handle. It'll click into place. If you wanna remove it, there's a button on the top left that you press in and you can slide the remote off. Again, to put it back on, find the slot, line it up with the arm and just snap into place. And that's your remote attachment. Once this is all installed, if you have the ratchet open on the collar below the handle, you can turn the full assembly up, down, left, and right. That's your full range of motion. Here is the set of cables that will run the length of the tower for the HiPod Superlight. Specifically, I want to bring your attention to the quick and strain relief plates that are pre-attached to the cables. This is where the camera is going to snap in and out. There's a lever that you will need to pull back to accept the camera, as there's an adapter pre-attached to the camera. And note that there's HDMI that comes out of one side and the remote cabling or LANC will come out of the opposite side of these plates. Here is the underside of that bottom plate and the hole you're going to use. This is another view of it. Notice we've taken one of the brass screws from the head and pre-inserted it. The lever will need to be pulled back, the flat screw that's in the plate itself, and then the camera screw which is inserted up into the plate. Here's how the assembly motion works. You won't have that long camera screw attached to the plate, so take that off and line the plate up with the HiPod head on the very outside. You'll see a round grip on the outside left hole. That's what you're gonna use. Take the camera brass screw, and notice it has two heads. Take the bottom portion and push it up into the threading of the plate as far as you can, and then take the secondary head, which will travel up and down the screw itself, and tighten that as much as you can. Here's a second view of it. That's what will hold the plate in place so that it can't shift around on top of the tower head. This is the camera that arrives with the HiPod Superlight, and I'm going to point out some of the key features you should be aware of. We send it with a mounting pedestal pre-installed, which will attach to the quick release plate we just put onto the top of the HiPod head. On the right in the hand strap, you will find a USB cable that not only powers the camera, but will send data to your computer when you're done. Under the hand strap, you will find a door that if lifted reveals a port called multi. This is where the cable for the remote control will be plugged in. 
on the bottom of the camera, you'll find a plastic sliding piece that you can push off to reveal the battery inside. If you push the little blue tab that's shown on the top right, then you can remove the battery. The small battery inside the camera only lasts for 20 to 30 minutes. So in a moment, I'll show you the large battery that will take over as the main power source. On the left side of the camera, the LCD window will be open to turn the camera on. It reveals a door which when dropped down shows the HDMI micro port and also the slot for your SD card. Be aware where these are as we'll come back to them later. Now we're going to install the camera. As mentioned, the camera has an adapter on the bottom that's pre-attached. You're going to snap that into the plate that has the levers pulled back so that they're open. Just line up the adapter on the camera, push it, and it'll snap right into the assembly. If you want to take it out, pull the levers back, and the camera will pop out. It's time to install the cables for the camera. Open the LCD window on the left and open the little door where you'll find HDMI micro and the SD card slot. Find the HDMI micro cable, line it up with the port, and plug it in. Then on the opposite side, under that little door, find the cable that has the yellow tag. That is your remote cable. Plug that in to the multi-port. When you have your remote and camera connected via this cable, you'll have control over tight and wide zoom for the camera and also the record start and stop. Here's a view of that remote cable from the opposite angle and then the HDMI cable coming out of the left side. Now let's talk cable management for a moment. Once you have the cables connected to the camera, make sure you can turn that camera up, down, left, right from the head in all directions without the cables yanking or pulling at any point. The plates keep any tension at the cable tips or camera ports from occurring. You can see the plates limit the cable tugging from below the camera, not at the camera ports or cable tips. This is critically important to be aware of and maintain as if the plates are not applied, you will break those cables and your camera won't work. Now, as a continuation of that thought, every tube stage has a piece of Velcro on it, and this helps to keep your video cables neat and out of the way. You can just open up the Velcro like this, put the cables inside, and then wrap the Velcro to close. It acts as a strain relief and keeps the cables from interacting with the handle ropes coming up from the control center on the unit. Now let's finish the LCD setup. On the back, you will see a strip of Velcro that will connect to the battery, which has another strip of Velcro on it. Just find the battery, which will look like this, although the style of battery will change over time, and stick it on the back of the LCD. Once that's done, find your HDMI cable coming down from the cable bundle that we applied to the camera earlier. Find the HDMI port on the LCD and plug it in. Now you're gonna find this USB cable. This is how you send power from the battery into the LCD. On this side of the LCD, you will find the USB port and just plug the cable in. And then follow that cable around to the other side where you will find the ports for the battery. Once that's plugged in, the LCD can get power. You will want to bind up that extra USB cabling with a twisty tie or something so it's not in the way. Now we're going to connect the cable for the remote control to the remote. You'll see it has a red head on the cable tip. This is part of that cable bundle shown earlier. Just plug that cord into the port of the remote control and you should see the remote light up when the camera is powered. Here are some of the remote functions you should be aware of. On the top left, there is the power slash record light, which will tell you that the remote itself has power. Just to the right of that is the camera power on and off button. On the second line down, we have the grid line on the left, and then there's this slider button, which is the lock button. If you push that down and see the red background, all of the functions of the camera will freeze up. Nothing will work. So here's a closer shot of that. When you see the gray background, that means the camera functions will be enabled. But again, if you ever see this with the red background exposed, nothing's gonna work. Okay, so that's that function. Now we go down to the two core buttons. You have the record start and stop button, and then you have the tight and wide toggle, which will control the zoom functions of the camera. Now I wanna bring something regarding power consumption to your attention. 
Many operators think that by hitting the power button on the remote and turning the camera off that they're conserving power for later use. The problem is, when you hit that button on the remote to turn the camera back on, you're drawing power from the small internal battery from the camera, which dies in 20 or 30 minutes, rather than the large external USB battery, which I'll show you how to set up in just a moment. So just leave the camera on in standby mode. You have 10 hours of power in that external battery and five hours of hot record time in the battery. So just leave it on, you'll have a better result. Now we will move on to the physical setup of the camera battery. You'll have all of these extra holes available to the right of the camera after it's set up. You'll take this camera battery with the metal adapter seen here, the style may change over time, but this is the general idea. Take that adapter and put it underneath of the head of the camera where it sits and find the extra brass screw for the camera connection. You're basically gonna do this in reverse from the camera. So from the top, put the screw in, line it up with the threading of the battery and cinch it up to connect. It's best to mount that camera battery so that the USB ports are facing back towards the camera. That will make the cable connection much easier in the next step. Go ahead and find the cable which has a USB female on one end and USB male on the other end. This is what you use to connect the battery and the camera together. On the camera inside the hand strap, you're going to find a small USB cable physically attached to the camera. That not only powers the camera, but also will send data to your computer when we're done. Take the cable with the USB female cable head and plug it into the camera as shown. And then on the other side, take the USB male end and plug that into your camera battery. That will start to supply power from that battery to your camera, although you may need to click the button physically on the battery itself to activate it. That varies sometimes depending on the exact model of the battery. Now another note regarding cable management. Notice the hand strap. I'll show you where this comes into play in just a moment. You're going to have all of this extra cabling in that USB female to male cable that we just connected and that's going to get in the way when the head starts moving. So bind it up like this, open up the velcro that's in the hand strap and then just take that cabling and then lock it down so that it won't get in the way of the head, the camera, the battery or any of the cables as they move. That'll make everything much easier as you're shooting. The rain gear for the high pod comes in three parts. This is the camera portion. You see the shield where the camera will look through when it's fully set up. At the bottom, you're gonna find this metal plate with a long groove cut out. This is how you connect it to the larger assembly. Here's the before shot of your camera setup as it is now without rain gear. You need to take note of where the head plate is where your camera quick release and strain relief plates are on top. The rain gear goes in between that and you sandwich it together. So you have the camera head on the bottom, the rain gear with its long metal rod with the groove as mentioned earlier, and then the camera with its cables and those plates sit on top. Take the same brass screw, sandwich everything together, and it'll hold. Once this is all connected, take the rain gear and then cover all of the apparatus, cables, and everything that's fully covered. Once this is done, make sure that you can move the camera up, down, left, right with no problem. There is a cinch at the very bottom of this long rain gear material. I leave that up to you based on how your movement of the head is. Here is the remote control portion of the rain gear. There's an opening that you can put your hand in if you want to control the remote from inside, or you can do it from outside the bag just on top whatever works best. It connects with a strap of Velcro at the very top of the remote arm. And then the LCD rain gear is pretty straightforward. Just find what looks like this and put it over the top of your screen, the cables, and the battery. Now it's time to put the tubes into the air. Every single tube stage has a collar and a cam lock with a piece of Velcro above. You will always open the cam lock below the tube section that you want to elevate. Open the lock, push the tube into the air, and then close the lever again to hold it in place. The collar will squeeze the tube. This is when you would use the Velcro to hold the cables against the tower so they stay organized and out of the way. When you're ready to compress the tower, always hold the tube above the collar and lever that you're about to unlock. If you simply open it, the tube will shoot down. Now that the tower is set up, I'm going to go over some important things you should know about your camera. Now, if you want the camera's text and record data to show on the LCD while you're recording, follow these steps. 
From the default screen, hit the menu button and then select camera mic in the top middle. It'll bounce you into a scroll window and then look for scene selection. Your display will change to look like this. Then on the far right, you'll see an arrow on the bottom. Go ahead and click on that and leave your screen here. You'll see standby which turns into record and battery life. Each time you turn the camera on, you'll need to set this up. Now to program your camera so it won't auto turn off after a few minutes, you'll do this. Go to setup and then scroll down until you see something that either says power save or eco mode and then go ahead and click into that and then turn power save or eco mode off. It varies based on which model you have. Also, if you see an option which says demo mode, you'll want to go into that and turn it off as well. Continuing with camera settings, this is something you're going to need to do at first time setup only. New cameras shipping in 2017 have an automatic dual video record setting activated in the camera. What this does is to record two files of the same clip in two different formats. What that does effectively is to take up twice as much memory in your SD card as it needs to. So to turn this off, this is what you need to do. Go to menu and then after that point, click on the top right icon that says image quality slash size. Then scroll down to where you find dual video record option and make sure that option is turned off. That will save you this extra file space and allow you to record longer at a time. One final note for those of you who are using the USB power pack style camera battery, to confirm the correct battery is powering your camera, once you have text on screen set up as explained earlier in this manual, look at your screen and if in the top right hand corner you see a battery icon, either dead or partly charged or anything at all that shows a battery, that means you're drawing power from the small internal battery in the camera. You need to click the external power pack battery on the side once connected for it to take over as the main battery for the camera. Otherwise, if you use the internal battery, that camera will die within 30 to 45 minutes. Once you have clicked the external battery and it is turned on, the battery icon on the LCD will disappear. This is what you want and it confirms the larger battery is active as the power source for the camera. When it's time to put your tower away, here's a quick tip. When you want to fold the legs, always pull up on the top portion of the legs and push your foot down on one of the black slats so that they compress in. That's going to allow the legs to collapse easily. And that's it.